in 1984, I had a rather creative dream, a weird dream. And this dream, in this dream, I saw a little line piece, a piece, a, a white line. And this line was as white as the moon. And when I woke up, I was wondering about this strange creative dream and thinking about it over and over. And I could not forget it. Anyhow, I went on working on paintings. And I want to go back a little bit to tell you about uh, how I started painting, how I started to become an artist in the 20th century. When I was sitting beside my father, when I was a year or five, five years old, my father asked me sometimes to paint the clouds in his painting. He was a painter, a landscape painter. And I was always wondering how he, how he did that. It was so amazing to see him. This is a painting of my father he did. And because clouds, he was so clever to ask me to paint the clouds. You see them here. And because clouds are amorphous. You can't make any mistake. You drip your brush into white paint and move it a little bit. And then the clouds were there. And that was, of course, amazing from him. Art, since that time, never left me. Okay, I wanted to be an artist. And school in that time did not interest me too much. Because suffering in a company, middle class company, being, being a servant, I didn't like that. But anyhow, I, I had a lack of knowledge, of course. But drawing, I did drawing and painting every day. And in the nights, in the evenings, I went with my friends to the dunes, looking at the stars, seeing constellations, and trying to figure out how they, what they are. Uh, Ursa Major, that kind of constellations. And in that time, they, uh, the Russian Sputnik was launched. And that was really an amazing thing. Uh, something in outer space. Uh, people were, uh, we, mankind was leaving Earth. That, it, it was to me amazing to see that. And a few years later, there was the landing on the moon. And we saw that live on television. We had a TV in the street somewhere. OK, I wanted to become an artist. And so I had to know what others did before. And I went traveling in Europe, looking at galleries to other artists. And I saw all the big painters, like Picasso and Max Ernst. And Francis Bacon, especially Francis Bacon, was so intriguing me. Uh, it, uh, and I went to several academies of art and try to master all the techniques, because I wanted to know everything without worrying me about any style. And uh, I would like to show you a few of these paintings I did in the 80s and the 90s in an interactive virtual gallery I made in commission for the Groningen Museum. And here you see that, and this is an interactive uh, museum I made later, but in that museum, in the Koop Himmelblau part, which you can see the back part there from the famous uh, Koop Himmelblau duo, uh, there I placed old paintings of myself. I, I hang old paintings of myself. Maybe we can go inside. Yes, we go in. And here you see the paintings I did, typical 70 from the past uh, 20th century, paintings in style uh, worldwide like William de Kooning, an American painter. I w I, 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 he was a very good painter, of course, and later these paintings. And so, but I had a feeling that all these paintings were just footnotes to the great 20th century painters. And I didn't like to be a footnote in painting, and I was going on and looking for something more than being some footnote. 
Here you see, I'm going to talk more about this, my later work also placed, this is already in outer space, but that's where we come to later. This, back to that, that strange dream, this creative dream, or weird dream, uh, it, it was not gone. I was amazed by the idea to do something as an artist in outer space. Could that be possible? Uh, but me, as a living in a small country without any, uh, no penny, <laughs> I mean, is that possible? Uh, I mean, thinking about such an enormous idea, working in outer space. Uh, we have ESA and Aztec, of course. And uh, okay, it frightened me really. Uh, but I decided to let my colleagues. Yes, we see some more uh, later work here in this gallery. Okay, I decided to make a press release. In that time, internet didn't yet exist. Uh, and we had press agencies like uh, UPI and Rotor, and uh, I figured out, out all the press agencies. And I made uh, this press release, and I sent it to all that agencies. You see, code simulation. <laughs> and it is May 85. And with my address and so on. And then I got back a reaction from a very famous artist who did big projects, this Bulgarian artist, Christo, and his wife, Jeanne Claude. And they operated all, always together. A very nice man, Jean Claude, has passed. So it's a pity. But. And he sent me a letter. Maybe you can read it. Thank you for sending me a copy of your press release for Spaceline projects. And here, I support your ID. If there is a need, I will recommend your project in order to help you to obtain the necessary permits. Can you imagine? I was very, yeah, I felt very good after this uh, from such a man. And also this uh, past and but very uh, big curator, Harold Seyman, a Swiss curator, he also sent me a nice letter uh, with support and he, he thought the, the value of art in this concept is big. Soon a museum will be there. Okay, uh, and so uh, I made a first in that time uh, in art. It was uh, kind of used to use just text. We were dematerializing in that time in the 80s, early 80s. And my artist uh, like Lawrence Wiener, he also he worked only in text, uh, uh, not uh, painting anymore. Just give an idea in, in the mind of another. And so I made this text to make my work manifest because it was difficult to materialize my ID in that time. I didn't know how. A line in outer space, visible from Earth, with a naked eye, at clear nights. That was the first uh, break with painting. I left Earth, in fact, virtually. <laughs> okay. And then I thought, what should I do on Earth making sculptures in granite and in metal and this, this vulnerable earth. Earth, there's space enough in space. In space, is space enough. Earth is done. And I thought, when you think about how they build buildings higher than in New York or in, uh, in China and in Saudi Arabia and in Abu Dhabi, higher and higher, why we can work on the moon and in space? And how we can think about it. Huh? And, uh, create ideas about it. Okay, thinking in space, it was a challenge, but how? And then I discovered VR, virtual reality. And I went to the Technical University of Delft and I told my story and I said, I need your help. I want to simulate, I want to, to, to make animations to show what I want. And they gave me help. I met uh, Eric Janssen, and his student, uh, Jauke Verlinde, and they were doing experiments in perception with virtual reality, with a head-mounted display and data gloves with tactile feedback. And here you see what we did. It's uh, one of the first virtual reality installations in Europe, probably. It was a virtual reality machine, uh, um, uh, Apple. And here you see myself standing <laughs> with a big, helmet and 
here I made in cyberspace, this, this you can call cyberspace, it's an empty starless space. In cyberspace I was grasping cubes I placed there and I could, with, my, with the data glove, I could take this virtual uh, cube and when I touch it, when I touched it, I felt it on my fingertips like with a kind of pressure machine. And this was amazing uh, to see this. Uh, so I discovered space, cyberspace, on my way to real space. In between was cyberspace. And I went on. Okay. I went on. And this, okay, we see here. Uh, Gervin de Haan, also from Technical University Delft. The, the installation, the old installation you just saw was big. And so I made a new installation. This installation uh, was visited by Jolante in Pulgri Studio. Here we are researching how we move in virtual space. And without Gervin, this should not be possible because he's a very clever postdoc uh, and virtual reality researcher. Here we are in a prototype state. Here you see. Okay, so I found a way to make my ideas about weightless sculptures visible in virtual reality, and that was a big step. Okay, this is the last movie. And here you see some models. Huh? I was going to I was going to, uh, to, uh, to make designs and thinking about what could I do. Uh, I, we had, of course, the internet revolution and the software came, 3D software, and uh, with help uh, of technicians uh, at the university, uh, I could develop this. And since a few years, there's a possibility to have CubeSats. Yeah? It's possible to, to buy a CubeSat for just for just uh, uh, 8,000 euros, you can have a CubeSat with inside a computer and inside a camera. And the launch is include. So I could make also with 3D printers small sculptures. I can make with 3D printers small sculptures in whatever material. Stainless steel, for instance. And this, I, my idea, my dream is to bring inside a CubeSat a small sculpture rotating in weightlessness and uh, observed by the video camera inside and communicated over the internet worldwide. This is what I want. And with sponsorship, it will be done one time. Okay, thank you. <laughs>